Uh, go to johnnynerdout.com if you want to get you know custom e-bike parts, accessories, anything you see here, I sell on my website, johnnynerdout.com. If you like to support small business, or you could also buy them on amazon.com and you could support Jeff Bezos, put another bathroom on his backup yacht. What's up guys, got a chilly evening today. I don't know why I'm wearing shorts, because I'm freezing. I've been inside all day and I don't check the weather apparently. But I got another custom e-bike build for you. I wanna go over what bike this is and what's cool about it and why you may wanna do the same thing to your bike or you might, you might wanna get this bike. I'm Johnny Nerdout, I'm a professional e-bike builder. I convert bikes into e-bikes. I convert now motorcycles into e-motorcycles and hopefully one day cars into e-cars. So this one, we've got a Minnesota framed fat bike. I think you could buy these from the house. I think that's where they where they sell these bikes. Um, this is a good bike. I think my customer said he got this for about a thousand bucks and it's got high-end components on it, Shimano Dior components. So this is definitely not a cheap bike. If you've ever seen these ones, you're like, I don't know, for the price point, maybe it's not worth it. These are good bikes. This had mechanical disc brakes on it, but we upgraded them to the hydraulic disc brakes. And these ones have the built-in uh, e-bike brake sensors for it, for Bafang. So these are made specifically for e-bikes, and I do carry those on my website. Check my description for links to all this stuff. So we upgraded them to hydraulic discs, or hydraulics, they were discs, um, but now they're hydraulics. Uh, so it's got a lot better stopping power. No adjustments needed with hydraulics. Down here we went with the BBS HD, 1000 watt motor, uh, 46 tooth chain ring, just a stock chain ring. We got a 48 volt 19.2 uh, battery here. We put a fat rack on here, it's the Topeak, uh, I think it's the Uni Touring Fat, I forget, but you'll see it on the link. Um, this is nice, it's made for fat bikes. We got the 500C color display up here. This is a really nice display. It's probably my go-to unless you need USB charging from the display. Then I would say go with something else. But this one, it's nice, it's color. It shows you your, your power consumption in real time. It'll show you a, a digital readout of the battery voltage. It does have a gas gauge that's somewhat accurate. Like any e like e-bike display the gas gauge like the bars they're almost never accurate i never go off of it i never recommend anybody going off of those displays they need to make a display that has an accurate readout but they just never do i that's the number one call i get is my battery this gauge never shows that it's full or it never shows that it's empty or it's way off and it's like i know i know i hear you i feel you it's nothing I can do about it though. I didn't design it. We got a gear shift sensor right here. This just cuts power while you're shifting gears. People are like, why do I need that? It just acts like a clutch. In a manual transmission, you need to hit the clutch in between shifting gears to cut power and then disengage the clutch and then go, then apply power again. That's what this does. When you're shifting gears, it disengages power for you. Otherwise, without this, you're constantly giving it power. You don't want to be giving it a lot of power when you're shifting gears. Normal human power, that's fine. But with these motor systems, it detects when you're shifting and it's gonna keep giving power. Your drivetrain doesn't like that. That's why some mid drives have a notoriety of eating up chains, which if you don't have a gear shift sensor, eh, you might. It's got a Dior, I think it's a 10 speed back here. Oh, we did upgrade. We went with a 10 speed e-bike chain on here. Yes, yeah, this is a 46 up here. I think this is like a 40 four tooth in the back so it, it's it's almost like a one-to-one -one gear ratio so let's go do a johnny nerd out performance test where i don't do any pedaling it's just motor by itself i hill climb super steep hill climb and then top speed just throttle no pedaling let's go check it out So you can see hill climb this thing absolutely no problem even with the 48 volt people are always like should i get a 52 volt or a 48 volt or should i go with a thousand watt or a 72 or 750 watt motor i want really good hill climbing i'm like don't worry about power it's all about their gear ratio that's going to be way more of a of a difference in hill climbing and performance is what kind of gear ratio do you have than the rate the power rating of either your battery or the amp rating of your motor I mean, to a certain point, once you start getting to like 72 volt systems, then yeah, then it's a, then the power becomes an issue. But 
48, 52 volts. It's more about gear ratio. Make sure you size your front chain ring correctly and size your rear cassette correctly to find exactly what kind of performance you want. This is gonna be the best. Don't worry about spending more money on a motor or a battery, you know, higher voltage battery. Spend the money here and here. That's where you're gonna get your performance. All in, I'd say the motor with this combo was about 720 bucks, something like that. I think this was about like 550. So we're at about 1300 bucks. They also did get a thousand watt lumen headlight. I just didn't install it yet. I always put those on dead last. It's like a front and rear rechargeable headlight set and the thousand lumens is super bright but uh so yeah this was about 1300 bucks for this bike um if you already have the bike obviously you'd have to include the price of the bike but if you already have the bike thousand dollars for a killer e-bike that does 33 miles an hour on the top speed test and hill climbs like this with these tires this thing's like a mountain goat so you're not going to find a pre-made e-bike for 1300 bucks that has these kind of specs and a 48 volt 19.2 battery is gonna go forever. And you could, I know some of you guys are like, why'd you put it on the rear rack? I know you don't like it on the rear rack. I don't like it on the rear rack, generally. Um, but if you're not doing super aggressive riding, this is just fine. And obviously this, this is a, a jumbo shark battery. It's not gonna fit in here. Um, we actually did two of these for this customer. He's got another bike just like this. One of them would have, but we decided to make a match. So they're both going back here. You still have your water bottle mounts here. It's still super functional. Ideally, you want to put it right in here though, and you'd mount it right here in those water bottle mounts. All right, guys, see you later.